In this video, I'm gonna cover the most powerful editing tool inside of Lightroom to help you edit better. So for us, we've explored every menu and toyed with every setting inside of Lightroom to see what it's really capable of. One of our favorite panels for crafting an edit is the camera calibration panel, now known simply as calibration. It's changed a little over the years, but the main features have stayed pretty much the same. You can see that we have only seven sliders here to work with, but it gets a little bit more intricate than that. We've covered this in many editing videos in the past, but this time we are really gonna go more in depth with it to help you get a better handle on it and help you get the looks out of Lightroom that you're going for. Oh, and before we get started, if you are new to Lightroom, we have a complete overview to the program to learn everything that you need to get started in less than 30 minutes, which I'll link below, along with in-depth videos on the HSL panel and the tone curve. And lastly, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So first, let's get on the same page with what this panel is actually doing. Every pixel of an image is made up of three values. You have reds, greens, and blues. Usually in something like Photoshop, you'd see these values being a number between zero and 255 for standard 8-bit color. If the reds, greens, and blues are all at zero, the color is black. And if they are all at 255, the color is white. Now, since raw images can be 12, 14, or 16-bit color, this 8-bit color scale doesn't make sense. So Lightroom shows the reds, greens, and blues as percentages. So this purple color is 42.9% red, 22.7% green, and 52% blue. Now, if you wanna see it in terms of 8-bit color for whatever reason, entering soft proof mode by pressing S on the keyboard will show you that. Now we can see we have 109, 39, and 139. Now, I don't wanna confuse you. I only bring that up because you may be used to those 8-bit color values more so than percentages. But what calibration does when adjusted is it affects each red, green, and blue value per pixel. For example, let's look at this cyan colored square. I'll freeze frame these values and then leave them on screen. Now let's adjust the red primary hue slider by dragging it to the right. We can see the red value stayed the same, but the greens and blues shifted. We now have less green and a little more blue. Now let's reset and take a look at the red square. Freeze the values. Now let's make the same adjustment. Red stays the same, more green, and blue dropped all the way to 0%. Now let's compare this to the HSL sliders. People often wonder what the difference is between adjusting the hues here and hues down in calibration. And the main difference is calibration adjusts the values of every pixel and HSL does not. HSL only adjusts values of set hue ranges per slider. So remember how the cyan square changed a little with the calibration slider? Well, let's adjust the red hue in HSL. Cyan did not change whatsoever. Rather, only squares that are inside of that red hue range were adjusted. It's kind of hard to explain how calibration works and Adobe doesn't really provide a lot of documentation either, but Another way to help you visualize it is by looking at a color wheel. With the red primary hue to the left, we are pretty heavy with pinks and greens and purples. To the right, it's oranges, yellows, and blues. Each primary will have its own effect depending on how you adjust it. But now let's take a look at how it applies to editing photos. So let's start at the top and then work our way down. And my advice for editing is usually this. Crank a parameter in both directions to see exactly what it's doing to your photo and then dial it back to taste. Think of calibration as developing the color profile of your image. It can help define the palette and the colors included in your image. And once you define this, you can then make further adjustments in all the other panels. But I think calibration is actually a pretty good place to start to build your edit. The shadow tint is the simplest calibration parameter. To the left, we add green to the shadows. To the right, magenta. I tend to like adding a little green to my shadows, but you can really just do whatever you'd like. We already talked a little bit about the red primary, but let's see it on a photo. Thinking back to the color wheel example, if we wanted the reds in the image to be more pink, which direction would we move the hue slider? Well, to the left, and we can kind of see that on the slider, it indicates a more pinkish hue on the left. Now this one adjustment already created such a dramatic difference in the look of the photo. Now to take it to a more orangish yellowish, we can drag it to the right. And of course, it's worth noting how other colors are also affected here as well. Even though this image has a more limited color palette, we can see the concrete gets this yellowish tint along with the bark along the trees. For this image, I wanna bring the hue back toward pink a little. And then for saturation, let's look at the extremes in both directions. Right now I'm thinking I wanna keep the colors punchy and bold, so a little boost in saturation might actually be nice. Next is green primary. We don't have a lot of green in our image, but as you know, adjusting the slider here will also have an effect on all the other colors. So let's take a look. I actually liked the hue cranked pretty far to the right. 
we can see we also have brought some subtle aqua tones into the sky as well. Bringing saturation down will tone things down a bit, and adding it in will increase the punchy luminance in the car. The image is starting to have a whimsical feel, and I kind of like it. The blue section can really make things look pretty crazy, so let's take a look. To the right, we've got purples and greens being introduced into the image. To the left, things tend to look more teal and orange. The sky is in an incredibly saturated aqua, the concrete and trees are incredibly warm, I guess. The reds haven't changed too much, just a little brighter and bolder. So with this cranked, let's actually head back up to the red primary and make an adjustment. With the red hue shifted toward the right now, we have this orange and teal look that was oh so popular four years ago. But here it's honestly pretty cool. So now that we've made pretty dramatic adjustments to our primary hues, we can actually start to play around with the balance between all three, as well as the saturation. We can also bring back the shadow slider for more looks as well. Okay, so now that we've seen the extreme color adjustments that we can make with calibration, let's take a look at a practical application of it. Here's a photo from an American football concert that Rachel and I shot. The stage was awash in blue light when we snapped this photo, so when it comes to editing, we have two choices. One is to simply embrace the overwhelming blue look because, well, that's what it was like to actually be there in person. The other option is to play with the colors and try to bring back some skin tone. So normally, I start with the exposure, getting it about where I want it. Then it's off to white balance. Since we have so much blue already, let's warm up the white balance. We can only crank it so far until it's capped out and we still have a pretty blue and magenta skin color. So in this case, I'm gonna leave the temperature as is, all the way up, and then bring the tint over to green to fix some of the magenta cast on the skin. Okay, now let's jump down to calibration. If we bring the red primary hue to the right, we just get more blue, which is not what we want. So instead, let's go all the way to the left. And the skin is looking a little red, so I'll lower the saturation a bit too. Now with the green primary hue, the left will bring blue back in. So let's go to the right. With the blue primary, nothing really helps out our skin tone. The hue adjustments are too extreme in wrong directions and saturation isn't really helping things either. Since we still have a lot of magenta tones, I'm going to move the shadow slider over to the left to neutralize it a bit. Okay, now lastly, we wanna add warmth to the skin tone, but we've already capped out our white balance. So what do we do? Well. Let's grab the adjustment brush and paint over our subject. Then where it says color, let's click the swatch and choose a nice warm yellow. All right, we brought him back to life with that. From here, I would continue editing as usual. I'd probably pull some reds out of the image with the HSL sliders. All right, let's take a look without the calibration adjustments and now with. Real quick, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people with thousands of classes covering photography, video, design, and a whole lot of other cool stuff. We recently released our own Skillshare class on DIY product photography, so if you enjoy our YouTube videos but wish there was more, well, this class is just that. We also did a live encore going into the editing process for the images we shot in our class, which is all right at your fingertips with a Skillshare membership. In addition to our class, there are so many other great photography and photo editing classes like this one on understanding aperture by Jamal Berger, or this class about finding your unique editing style by Sean Dalton. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons that can fit just about any schedule, and a premium membership is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. We'll see you in there. So usually you won't use calibration for such drastic adjustments, but I wanted to show you what it's capable of since it's kind of hard to explain. It's easier to visualize with dramatic examples. Hopefully you can see why it's such a powerful tool. I'm a tool. I'm a tool, I'm a tool tool. And it can be really crucial to crafting your post-processing look. Now, if you have any questions about calibration or you want us to cover anything else in Lightroom, leave us a comment below and let us know. That's all for this one. We'll be back soon with our first shoot with the model in over a year. So make sure you're subscribed and that notification bell is enabled so you don't miss out when we post. And if you would hit the thumbs up button on this video, let YouTube know this video is worth showing to more people that would really help us out. That's all for this one. We'll see you next time, bye. Oh, 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 oh,